this is like the happenstance. I'm Kendra and it is time for chapter 27 of Yarn Tales. Yarn Tales is my ongoing series here at Hook by Happenstance, where I read books, I tell you a bit about them, and then I apply silly Kendra rules to my rating of them, and I add a segment to my reading shawl. Now my reading shawl is an ongoing project throughout the year where I am endeavoring to make a tangible product from my intangible reading to help push me to read more, because sometimes when I don't have a physical product as a result of a hobby, I have difficulty keeping up with it, even if I generally like it and I do enjoy reading. I'm also, in broad terms, trying to spend more time reading books for myself. But I have, over the last decade, when I was not reading books for myself, read a great deal of books to my children, and I mean, we're keeping up that tradition too. So the book we're gonna discuss today is one of those books that I experienced with my entire family, my hub and stance included. This was on one of our familial rest days, and it kind of came about um, just out of the blue. So one of the things that we've been doing on our days off, because my husband's schedule is segmented kind of weird, so we end up with a four-day weekend every two weeks, which is really nice because it always feels like a mini vacation when he has days off. I mean, there's a slog in the middle, but we enjoy our longer weekend. We have been making a trip to the library to change out books, and now that I have three readers, and my husband's gotten back into reading some too. We are all about checking out the library books. And um, so we had gone and I was looking through the shelves trying to find books for my 10 year old and I was by the Neil Gaiman books. I was like, oh, I really need to pick up something Neil Gaiman because I've heard so much about him. I've heard him speak. Uh, people think very highly of the work and I wanted, you know, something that I could read to us all. I didn't necessarily want to start with like the graveyard book or Coraline or one of like the darker books. I wanted something lighter and I noticed there was a book I'd never heard of before called Fortunately the Milk. So I grabbed that, you know, checked out all our other books, we came home and then we're just kind of loafing around the house not doing anything really and I was like, hey, who would like for me to read? And they're all like, we would! And so I picked up this book and I started reading aloud figuring I would just read you know, for like half an hour, 45 minutes. Turns out <laughs> that evening, we spent the entire evening reading this book. So we read Fortunately the Milk by Neil Gaiman in one sitting, basically. Uh, my husband went and made dinner while I read, and then we ate while I read, and he read part while I was eating, and it was a good old time for all of us. I had never heard of this book before. Perhaps you haven't either, even if you've heard of Neil Gaiman. Um, this book is the story of a dad and two kids, and the mom is on a trip. And everybody is kind of discombobulated because it's out of the norm, and so they're all concerned about what's gonna happen in the morning when they need to eat, and they're gonna eat their cereal, and they all sit down to eat cereal, and there's no milk. So they send the dad out to get milk, and he is gone an incredibly long time. And he finally gets back with the milk for the cereal. And the kids are a little upset that their mom is gone and everything's, you know, out of sorts. So the dad launches in to the story of why he was so long at the store. And then it takes you on this fantastical story about the dad's adventure. Um, you can decide whether or not you think it's what actually happened or not. Um, but it is just a really long explanation to his children, takes circuitous routes through multiple little like vignettes of story and people and characters and it just keeps going and going and fortunately the milk shows up at the end and they are able to eat their breakfast. So it was a really good, I would call it a romp. It was really funny, very clever. And it did a good job of, for all those vignettes I talked about, tying them all together in a way that was interesting. And you could kind of see some things coming so you could, you know, feel clever. But then there was always that little thing that you're like, I didn't see that coming or I wouldn't have guessed this. So it was really enjoyable. Um, I particularly enjoyed it because I'm this kind of parent where I will make up random silly weird stuff to make your children happy when they're not. Um, and I think that's part of the reason my kids enjoy the book is because, you know, that's the kind of life they live. So this 
didn't seem as fantastical for them as it might for some people. But I mean, the story was a bit fantastical, but the premise, not so much. So overall, I gave Fortunately the Milk four stars. It was really good. It was not super long. It was like a novella. It was definitely longer than a short story, probably novella length. Um, and it had a bunch of drawings. The drawings were okay. Um, they kind of added to the story, but they totally weren't necessary, especially with me reading it aloud. I did find them amusing as the reader though. So that was kind of, I don't know, a thing. Um, the reason it got four stars is because the plot was very light like it was there just wasn't much depth to it the characters weren't super developed but they weren't meant to be um but it was it was a four star book so let's take a peek at my reading shawl my reading shawl has four different yarns included one for books that i share with my kids one for books for my life's library subscription where i get a new book every six weeks one uh color for physical books i experience on myself and one for audiobooks i experience by myself so this obviously was a book with my kids. So it was made out of cattails yarn in the Lady Celine colorway. And each of the stripes or segments ends up with a patterned row, which is different for each type of yarn and book. And then a textured crochet row for each of the stars the book receives. So here we have this. And this is the Lady Celine and it's got some gold Stellina in it. So a little bit of sparkle and I really like how it's turning out. I like the large stripe. Like I had a few not so great books in here, which is one of the things that the reading shawl is really good at showing me is like being able to compare and contrast like what kinds of books I was reading and then how much I was enjoying them versus other times. And I had kind of a, a little spree of not so great books here. So there's some like smaller, um, segments so you have a lot of the lace but not a lot of the thicker segments and then we're moving back into some better books and so that nice thick stripe and the lady celine is so pretty when it's in a thick stripe this is part of cat's wheel of time colorway um and i just i really like it it's got a nice mix whenever this like blue i kind of in this last row there was a number of pops of this blue that were not muddled by the gray and black and they were super exciting when I got to them. So I'm really enjoying seeing how this is turning out. We are slowly approaching the end of my March reads and that will end this shawl. So uh, keep, keep your eyes here to see the rest of the books that I read during March and then how the shawl ends up. If you would like to keep track of all the other things I've read this year, there is a list on the channel here of all the Yarn Tales videos, including a list of last year's Yarn Tales videos, which was a different shawl, but still the book review sort of things are there if you're interested. And make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss out because I don't post on a regular schedule, even though sometimes I know it seems like I do. I don't in the grand scheme of things. So if you subscribe, then I will just float into your feed whenever uploads happen and you won't miss out on anything. I will see you all next time. Bye.